Now then, I do. It's been a long time since I made a video. So this video is going to be a channel update. I'm going to explain why it's been so long uh, and what the future holds. But in addition to that, I've also got a little bit of a project, which is the face frames for these bookcases here. Now, I didn't film everything with this because it was a departure from my usual methodology in that it was almost exclusively um, machinery and power tools that I used because I needed to get it done after we moved in here. So I'll give you a quick look around it and then after that uh, we'll get into the rest of the video. So with this bookcase there's obviously quite a large cram moulding. Then there are fluted columns. That go all the way down. And the columns have uh, sort of I don't know what you'd call them. Column bottoms, I suppose, but bigger ones. And then there are baseboards that run all the way around. And then on the corners of these, it's obviously a three-dimensional column. And likewise on the little mini bookcase in the corner with a few Yodas. As you can see, it's uh, quite a large set of bookcases and it took probably one to two hundred hours to make, I didn't actually time it, but it was a fair while. Anyway, back to the video. Starting off as I do on pretty much every project, I'm going to cut my timber to rough length. Now the bookcases are just IKEA Billy bookcases in the oak finish and the timber I'm using is European oak and I'm going to be using about five cubic feet here um, which is quite expensive these days it's uh, it's a good few hundred pounds for five cubic feet of oak now uh, and this mitre saw is a new Makita mitre saw that I'll be doing a review of at some point in the future. Right, so getting on to the main reason for this video. Um, I st the last time I made a video was just before I had a significant career change. Now, with that career change, I also moved from the south of England back up to the north of England, back to West Yorkshire. And when I moved, we didn't have a house or anything like that, so we had to get a rental property. And the garage in the rental property was very small. So all of my woodworking tools were in there, as well as my motorbikes and lots of other stuff. And it just meant that for the time that I was there, I couldn't do any woodworking at all. I couldn't even get my motorbikes out to ride them because the garage was that packed with stuff. Now, whilst we were living in this rental property, my wife and I uh, managed to save up and we've bought our own house. Now, we've been in the house for a while now, but we had to do a lot of work in the house. Uh, these bookcases are the last of the work that's getting done inside the house. But I had uh, this garage built and all the electrics put in as well. Uh, so for those of you that are interested, my old job, I was in the army for 23 years and after retiring from the army, I've now moved into engineering and I'm working on x-ray and ultrasound machines. Uh, I spent the last few years in the army, well, I say last few, I spent six years studying with the Open University to get an engineering degree. And... Um, yeah, so that is basically why I haven't produced a video in so long. You know, moving, changing career and buying a house and then obviously with the pandemic and stuff like that, it's just meant I haven't been able to do anything. Now, 
This plane of thicknesser is also new to me. Uh, this is the Axminster Trade 10 inch spiral head plane of thicknesser. And there will be a review of this coming as well at some point in the not too distant future. Likewise, the bandsaw that you saw me using uh, a minute ago, the Charmwood bandsaw, I'll be doing a review of that as well. Now, I know that they are quite common. Uh, lots of people have these. Um, and I know there's been a couple of reviews on them, but I thought I'd put my two pence in as well. Right, so after chopping to rough length, chopping to rough width on the bandsaw, uh, I then plane and thickness down to roughly final dimensions. Now there's a lot of different pieces here. Some of the pieces are more than two and a half metres long. Some of the pieces are, are relatively short and there is a lot of wood to get through. Now obviously I'm not going to film everything because there are so many different parts that it would just be ridiculous to film everything. Then after all that I'm cutting to approximately final width on some of the pieces and actual final width on some of the others. Now as well as doing uh, 90 degree cuts like this, at this point I had loads of 45 degree cuts to do as well but as I said before I haven't filmed those. And as you can see from this for anything that kicks up a lot of dust into the air now that I'm sporting uh, a rather sort of bushy thicket on my face. I need a dust mask that can cope with beards. And this is pretty much the only option out there that's even close to sensible money. Although this isn't sensible money, it's very expensive for what it is. But again, I bought this at a time when I was either saving or investing in stuff to do with the new house. So the new tools, whilst yes, they were very expensive, they've, I've basically been serving for when I moved into our own place. So after making all the cuts on the machinery, I'm now marking out the start and stop points on the fluted columns for the for a palm router. Now these columns they've got three flutes in the center and then a chamfer on either edge, although all you're gonna see here is me cutting uh, one flute on one piece because there are a lot of these columns there's actually eight columns um, and along with that there are all the uh, um, column bases then all the baseboards and the crown moulding is actually made out of three different profiles so there's I spent an enormous amount of time processing wood on this project. One thing that I didn't say in the introduction to this video is that these face frames are designed to be removable. So the only things that are sort of semi-permanently attached are the columns and they're screwed to the bookcases. They're not actually glued or anything like that. Then the bottoms of the columns, for the, for the flat column bottoms, they're just pushed into place with dowels, no glue. The corners, uh, they basically wrap around, but there's no dowels or anything, so they, to take them off you can literally just slide them up. The crown moulding is also screwed on at the top, but no glue, and then the baseboards just push into place. So you can remove each individual baseboard by just putting pressure at the top and tilting it and then pulling it out. And I deliberately designed it like this because the IKEA bookcases that we've had in the past, most of them have been fine, but some of them when they get to sort of eight or nine years old and they start to sag, they go a little bit wonky and stuff like that. And I just wanted to be able to remove, not necessarily the entire face frame, but parts of it so that I could replace one or two bookcases here and there um, as the need arose. So another thing that I've got coming up in the pipeline is to line out my new garage. 
Now I've done the back wall because I needed to hang my tool cabinet but I haven't done the rest of it yet. That's going to be coming at some point in the future. Um, now I'm, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not, you know, I'm not a trim carpenter or anything like that. Which is why I also haven't gone into too much detail on, on these first frames because if there's something that I'm doing that, well, I mean there isn't a right or a wrong way to do anything like this but there might be ways to do things that are a lot better than the ways that I've done them. Uh, and that's simply because, like I said, I'm not a trim carpenter. Likewise, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, a carpenter in any sense. So when I come to do the lining out of the garage, I don't know whether I'm going to film it or not. Leave a, a comment below if you want me to film it. So, in terms of upcoming tool reviews, we've got the Makita Mitre Saw. We've got the Axminster Planar Thicknesser. We have the Charnwood Band Saw. And I've also got the new two horsepower, or rather, it's new to me, it's not a new model, but the two horsepower dust extractor. So if you want to um, have a review of that, let me know. Oh, and cutting these crown mouldings on the router table. So this is the most intricate profile, but like I said, there are three different profiles. It was an absolute nightmare cutting this on a router table and it's convinced me that I need to invest in a spindle moulder because I hate the router table. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much what's coming up in terms of tool reviews. I'm also going to have some smaller projects like um, picture frames and speaker stands and things like that. Now, these crown mouldings they were an absolute pain, lots and lots and lots of hand sanding and then when I actually cut them um, to fit on the bookcases and did the corners rather than trying to calculate angles I just set the mitre saw to 45 degrees then I glued all three of the profiles of the crown moulding up the bottom of which has a flat back and a 90 degree um, bottom so I've got two flat and square faces and I just butted them up against the fence on the mitre saw and then cut down at 45 degrees and it ended up cutting exactly the right angle. So having to do this to about five cubic feet of oak it took a very very long time to sand down and for all the tricky profiles on the mouldings it was just a case of wrapping sandpaper around anything I could get my hands on. Large dowels, card scrapers, pencils, paint brushes, sponges, anything that I could get to fit each and every profile. In addition to that I also used some hand planes um, and some carving chisels. But again I didn't film that. This video is long enough as it is. So anyway, that's about it for what I've got to say for the time being. Oh yeah, apart from one more thing. I'm old and I'm fat and I have to wear glasses now and I don't like it. So I hope that you found that update and the video of making these face frames at least a little bit interesting and i hope it's got you excited for what's to come on the channel now i don't know about release schedules for videos but all i can say is that it won't be too long before the rear anyway thank you very much for watching take it easy and i'll see you later